recently a manuscript has been discovered from Sana'a in, uh, in Yemen, and it's referred to as the Sana'a manuscript. Uh, that manuscript has two layers of Quranic writing. The lower layer has been scraped off, and uh, the upper layer has uh, the Quranic text written over. Now, the upper layer text uh, quite closely corresponds to what Muslims are reading uh, in, in the world today as the text of the Quran. Uh, the lower text that has been scraped off has some variation from what Muslims are, are reading in today's uh, text. Perfect preservation, ladies and gentlemen. Perfect preservation. That's what our Muslim friends have been telling us for decades. Perfect preservation right down to the letter from the time it was revealed to Muhammad. Seeking evidence for this claim, we opened their most trusted sources, and we read about entire chapters of the Quran being lost forever, large passages being lost forever, verses being eaten by a sheep lost forever. How did our Muslim friends respond when we showed them that their own sources repeatedly declare that the Quran was changed over and over and over? They said, Perfect preservation right down to the letter. Hatun Tash and Jay Smith went to Speaker's Corner with 26 different Arabic Qurans. Not 26 different translations, 26 different Arabic Qurans. How did our Muslim friends respond? Perfect preservation right down to the letter. Non-Muslims are publishing entire books filled with Quran variants. How do our Muslim friends respond? Perfect preservation right down to the letter. Fortunately, after decades of non-Muslims showing Muslims what's in their own sources and their own manuscripts, after decades of Muslim apologists lying about the history of the Quran, there are finally some Muslim scholars who are starting to admit that there are holes in the narrative. And it's very clear to you and to every single very advanced student and specialist that the standard narrative has holes in it. That's what I'm going to say. Why are they finally acknowledging that there's a problem? Because the evidence is piling up too fast. And Muslim scholars are realizing that the longer they deny reality, the more shame and embarrassment they'll face later. Now, the new problem we face is that even as Muslim scholars are finally acknowledging that there are holes in the narrative, Muslims are reinterpreting the words of their own scholars, insisting that what their scholars really mean is that there are simply different ways to pronounce certain words in the Quran. This is sheer nonsense. Sheikh Yasser Qadi would not be in full panic mode over some pronunciation differences. Muhammad Hijab wouldn't have needed to delete an entire section of an interview if all Sheikh Yasser Qadi had meant was that there are different possible pronunciations of the same word. But let's focus on Dr. Shabir Ali, who has recently admitted that there are different Qurans in different parts of the world. Uh, today, most Muslims read the Quran in a text uh, that uh, is referred to as the Egyptian edition uh, of 1924. That's how scholars uh, refer to it. Most Muslims may not have realized that this is the designation uh, for that uh, manuscript, for, for, for that text uh, to, to Muslims in general. This is just simply the Quran. Uh, but this is not the only text of the Quran that is read uh, throughout the world. He's also admitted that there are differences in Quran manuscripts. So there was this period in which uh, Muslims had the opportunity to teach others the Quran uh, without insisting on the precise words. Recently, a manuscript has been discovered from Sana'a in, uh, in Yemen, and it's referred to as the Sana'a manuscript. Uh, that manuscript has two layers of Quranic writing. The lower layer has been scraped off, and uh, the upper layer has uh, the Quranic text written over. Now, the upper layer text uh, quite closely corresponds to what Muslims are reading uh, in, in the world today as the text of the Quran. Uh, the lower text that has been scraped off has some variation from what Muslims are, are reading in today's uh, text. What's disturbing is that even when someone like Dr. Shabir Ali admits that there are different Arabic Qurans, and even when he admits that there are differences in the manuscripts, 
The Muslims in the comments section are still claiming that all Shabir really means is that there are different pronunciations of the same Arabic words. That's all he means. No, that's not what he means, my Muslim friends. Feel free to contact him and ask him. Send a message to Dr. Shabir Ali and ask, Shabir, when you say that there are differences in the manuscripts, do you only mean that there are different pronunciations of the same Arabic words? Shabir is going to give you an education because Shabir knows what non-Muslim scholars are finding when they go through manuscripts of the Quran. They're finding missing words, added words, changed words, words moved around, words written over, words erased. It's a giant mess. As an example, yesterday, Dr. Dan Brubaker, a textual critic of Quran manuscripts, posted a video where he shows a single page of a Quran manuscript. He shows that there are no less than 11 textual variants and corrections on that one page. And these aren't simply different pronunciations of the same Arabic word. Let me give you one example of what he means from the video. This is verse 6, 110. This part of the verse reads, Fi tuyanihim yat mahun. We let them wander blindly on in their insolence. And I've circled there the word that roughly corresponds to the word that we're looking at, fi tuyanihim. Because in this manuscript, the word tuyanihim does not exist. Rather, its place is um, taken by the word hausihim. So it is an alternate word. Fi hausihim actually... Uh, is used, as you can see in another verse, not too far from here in the same surah, then leave them plunged in their foolish talk. So here at 6.110, with this alternate word, it has the uh, reading of, we let them uh, remain plunged in their blindness, or, or remain immersed, perhaps, in their blindness. Makes sense, to my understanding of, uh, of the Arabic. It, it does make sense. It's just an alternate, uh, alternate reading, a different word from what we have today. Different Arabic words, different meanings, different translations. And what are our Muslim friends going to conclude from this? Perfect preservation right down to the letter. My Muslim friends, do you have any clue what kind of damage you're doing to the future of your religion right now? Once this lie has been exposed, possibly the biggest lie in history, the supposed perfect preservation of a book that was repeatedly changed and corrupted. Once this lie has been exposed, we are never going to believe anything you tell us about your religion ever again. When you lie to our faces about what we can see with our own eyes, you destroy your own credibility. When your own sources say that entire chapters of the Quran were lost, and that large passages were lost, and that countless verses were lost, and you say, perfect preservation right down to the letter, it becomes impossible to believe you. When you say that there are no textual variants in the entire history of the Quran, while textual critics who go through the manuscripts say that they've found tens of thousands of textual variants, there's simply no way to take you seriously ever again. This is so fun to watch. I encourage everyone to click on Dr. Brubaker's new video so that he can take you through 11 variants and corrections on a single page of a manuscript of a book that's been supernaturally protected by the great God Allah. I think we can all agree that if a book has all the features of a book that's been changed and corrupted, even though it's been perfectly preserved, it must indeed be a miracle.